Hello my Tubies and my Teletubbies. It's Sheila True Love here with you. And this morning I was listening to my son's video on stop giving so much of yourself away. And he made so many, <clears throat> excuse me, he made so many good and valid points. You know, uh, when he was saying how so many people you know, they give so much of themselves and pour so much of themselves into other people and people are not pouring anything back into them. And there's also, I'm making, I'm, I'm also making this video to try to help people understand why is it that you see some people who seem to be so popular, they seem to have, uh, so many friends, they seem to have, uh, they don't have to fly solo. But before I share my view with you, I want you to hear some of uh, the points that my son is making here. So hold on. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis Lewis Speaks 2022. And today I want to talk to you all about emotional currency. You know, I realized that lately I've been feeling very angry. I've been feeling very depressed. And I realized that's because I've been investing my emotional currency in the wrong people. I realized that I have been so understanding, so empathetic to people that have not returned that to me. And so I'm thinking a lot about emotional currency. I'm thinking about how we invest our emotional currency, our understanding, our listening ear, our empathy, into people and situations that don't deserve it. There's a lot of people in this world, they don't deserve our listening ear. They don't deserve our kindness. They don't deserve our empathy. You know, what they deserve is to be ignored. I realize that certain friends have put me on the back burner, thinking that they could see me anytime, so they're canceling plans with me. They keep on just taking me for granted. And after a while, you have to ask yourself, what is it about you that other people think it's okay to take you for granted? What energy are you giving off? And I realize there's such a thing as being overly understanding, overly empathetic, to the point where you shortchange yourself. And from now on, I'm not understanding anything somebody has to say. I don't want to hear it. If you're shortchanging me, if you're not giving me what I deserve and trying to give me just an excuse, guess what? I'm not here for excuses. I'm here to get what I want. And that's it. I don't want to hear the excuse as to why you cannot show up for me any longer. If I invest my emotional currency into you, you best believe you're going to start doing the same thing for me or else we will not be no more. I'm done investing my time, energy, and resources in people that do not give that back to me. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. These godless, soulless people are indeed a plague on society. You know? I realize that there are people who I call friend in my life who don't really see me the way that I see them. I put them as a priority. They put me as an option. You know, I had a so-called friend cancel plans with me recently just to go hang out with somebody else who they value time and, 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 and energy with. So I'm like, okay, I see where I stand in this person's life. Huh. You best believe that person has been, how you say, demoted in my life. Because that's what life is. And that's what friendship is. It's a job. You get promoted as you show up, as you invest. The more you show up, the higher up you go. When you start being inconsistent, flighty, fickle, sometimey, okay, I see what time it is. You get demoted. And let's be honest, a lot of people, they're looking out for self. They're looking out for the bigger, better option. They're looking out for the one who guarantees them the best time, the, the best experience, the new experience. And so, of course, they're going to go over to that person, right? 
Now, what he just said, I wanted to pause that for a moment. He's right. People are looking for whoever they feel they're going to have the most fun, the most whatever, the most experience, whatever. Yeah. And what you have to understand is that my son and I, we are trying to live a Christian lifestyle. We're living a Christian lifestyle. You know, we're not like modern day Pharisees where we're going to be fanatics or like a martyr, like oh, to be a Christian, you got to suffer and you got to go through suffering. No, but y'all, please, we don't have time for that. At the same time, when you're trying to live a Christian lifestyle, you're going to find that you're going to have to fly solo a lot of the times. You know, you see a lot of people who seem to be so popular because look at the things that they're willing to put up with. Look at the things that they're willing to do. Like, I'm not willing to let anyone take advantage of me. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to let people abuse me, use me, talk to me any old kind of way, disrespect me. I'm not putting up with that either because I don't do that to them. And I don't deserve that. And I'm just happy to see that my son feels the same way. Before he put up with all of this nonsense and all of this bullery, he'd rather just cut you off. My son is a very elite social worker. He's an amazing social worker. People have nothing but excellent, awesome things to say about this man. Now, because he's living a, working really hard, and I can see it, Jehovah sees it, Yahweh sees it, Jesus Christ sees it. He's working hard to live a Christian lifestyle. And in the process of that, many times he finds that he have to cut people off. He's got to cut them off. Now, and I also recognize that if you're not willing, here's, here's the clincher. If you're not willing to do the things that these other people are willing to do. That's why they have so many friends. That's why they, 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 they seem to be so popular because look at what they're willing to do. If you're not willing to sell your allegiance to the devil, cause you can't sell your soul cause our soul belongs to Jesus Christ. He already bought that. So he owns that, but you have a lot of people who are willing to sell their allegiance to the devil. They don't care about things that they do that is offensive or that hurt God or Christ. They don't care. If you're not willing to sit around smoking dope, smoking crack, crystal meth, drinking like a sailor, abusing alcohol, because that's what I used to do. I used to abuse alcohol. You know, you're trying to socialize. You're trying to fit in, man. Please, it was killing me. So if you're not willing to do all of these things, that's why you don't have what they have. You're not willing to do what they do. Like you look at these celebrities, they have all of this, what they're influencers. And look at the things they're willing to do though. They sold their allegiance to the devil a long time ago. That's why they're so popular. That's why they got like 1.5 million viewers and 3 million viewers. Look at the things that they're willing to do. That's why they have, and like, I, I got to keep putting emphasis on this. If you're not willing to do what they're willing to do, that's why you don't have what they have. And like I said, again, I'm, I have to keep reiterating this. I don't mean to be, you know, redundant, but like the Bible says, repetition is a good thing. No, that's why my son, he has to constantly cut people off or he finds himself fly, flying solo. You know, and I'm very, very proud of this man. He makes me proud of him each and every day because I look at how far he has come and where he's at today. He's amazing. He's always been a wonderful son, wonderful son. And may Jehovah and Jesus Christ bless this man abundantly because he deserves it. He really deserves it. There's not many mothers out here who, who could honestly say, they have a, a, a children who honor their parents. My son honors me in every sense of the word. Every weekend, we're spending time together. If we're not spending time together, we're on the phone talking. If we're not talking, we're texting. My daughter, well, that's a different story. You know, she, she got issues that she needs to address and come to terms with. 
But I know she better get her act together because Jesus Christ said he's not taking it lightly when it comes to the way you treat your parents. But I don't want to stay on that. The point is, my son, this video, like I said, it's stop giving so much of yourself away. And, and I was just listening to it intently. In fact, I listened to it three times. And every single thing that he's saying, he's on point, 100%. Regardless of the plans and commitments that they make with you, they don't mind canceling. They don't mind putting you on the back burner for the sake of their own needs. So, like I said, everybody's out here looking out for themselves. It's time that I become more self invested. And it's not being selfish. We have got to get rid of the notion that we're being selfish whenever we start taking care of our needs. No, I'm being self-full. I'm being self-invested because I'm so, so sick of investing my time, energy, and resources in people who don't do the same for me. That's how you become emotionally bankrupt. You're pouring your emotional currency into these people it's too much. And I think right now, especially in this day and age, in this time period where we live right now, it's important to be very selective and very choosy about where and with whom you spend your time. He's very good. He's, oh, he's right on that too. Now the thing, a point, I want to give an example. If I wanted to have a house full of people all the time, if I wanted company all the time, or if I wanted to be Miss Popular, let me tell you something. I already know how to keep people in my life. All I have to do is keep people liquored up, keep them fed, and keep weed in my house. If I was to keep weed, I call it dope. If I kept, because uh, I know I know a couple of people who I see that they always have people in their house. They always have, you know, pe people hanging out with them. And then I notice that these these people who are, seem to be so popular. They keep weed in their house. They're cooking all the time. So they keep food in the house. They keep feeding the people. And they keep alcohol and liquor. People are always going to come to your house when they know that I can always go. Let's just say I can always go to Sheila's house. She always has food. Mm -hmm. I could always go over to Sheila's because she always got booze and she always got liquor. And she keeps weed. Yup. That's a good time. Yeah. She, I like going over there to her because she's fun. Yeah, she's fun. She do fun things. You know, that's people who don't mind being taken advantage of. People not coming for your company. They're not really coming for you. They're coming for what they know they can get out of you. You know, I know I could go over there and hang out with this person because they always spending money. They always going in their pocket. Or I could call them up and they'll drive me here and drive me there. I don't have to give them gas money. You know, they can just take advantage of these people. That's why you see those type of people seem to be so popular. Are you willing to do what they do so you can have what they have? I'm not willing. My son isn't willing either. Because no, no, this can't keep happening. I realized the reason why I've been feeling so angry is because I have not been getting the same investments poured into me. I've been pouring too much into everyone else's cup and not enough in my own. And let this be a lesson to you. Let this be a lesson. You know, when you pour into everyone else's cup, when you are a healer naturally by nature. I am a healer. I want people to feel happy. I love when people feel whole, you know? But when you are a healer, you have to, for one, make sure that you are whole, that you are happy and joyful. Because there's a, there's a secret that I wanna tell you all because I, I definitely feel that you should know this secret. Your joy is your protection. Your joy is your best weapon. And when you constantly give yourself away, when you constantly betray yourself for the love, approval, and acceptance of someone else, you gradually chip away 
at the structure of your joy. And ultimately, you'll start to notice that it's whittled down to a toothpick and you're wondering why you feel angry and sad and depressed and low spirited. It's because you're doing too much for everybody else and not enough for you. You're pouring too much in everybody else's cup and not enough in your own. And also, part of pouring into your own cup is demanding that other people pour into you. And if they don't, get rid of them. Disconnect. If they're friends, you definitely try to let them know what's going on. Once you let them know and they still don't fix things, you have to let them go. Let go of the emotional vampires. If it's co-workers, you are forced to walk, work around them and walk around them. Basically, you know something, just limit your contact. Limit your contact to just business. It's a tendency, especially at work, where you think that you want to have a wonderful, friendly work environment. But there's a thin line between being friendly and also being professional. You have to always make sure you maintain that professional demeanor because you can quickly get distracted. And you can also quickly get deceived into thinking that the people that you work with are your friends. But in all actuality, it's a business. It's a business. Keep your personal and your professional life separate. That's right. You know? And know who you can pour into and know who you can't pour into. I had to learn that. I had to learn that. My new task, my now my new task is to begin to identify all the emotional vampires in my life and to begin disconnecting from them. Because <clears throat> I'm done. I'm done. I try my best to turn the other cheek. I try my best to, you know, not take it personally. But how can you not take it personally? When a person is not pouring into you, when they're deliberately canceling plans with you to go over there with somebody else, please, where's the loyalty? That's right, honey. I don't want to make this video too long. His name is L Majesty, L Dash Majesty. And uh, a picture of him is there. He's gorgeous. He's totally gorgeous. And uh, he has a lot of uh, several videos, and all of his videos are on point. Well, majority of his videos are on point. Absolutely. You know, like I said, you have got to find these vampires, and you've got to get rid of them. And I can't put enough emphasis on the fact that if you're not willing to do what these people are willing to do, if you're not willing to put up with abuse, let people dog you out totally, that, please, I can't be so bothered. No. And it's not about my ego. It's about knowing what I deserve and it's me knowing how I treat people. And if you can't pour the same energy into me that I'm pouring into you, poof, poof, be gone. This is Sheila True Love, truly loving you. And please, don't let people take advantage of you, sweetheart. Learn how to enjoy your own company. I'm great company. I can't speak for everybody else, but I know I'm great company. And I will always have me, myself, and I. I have three good friends that I've had since I was 16 years old. Since we were 16, and we're still connected, very much connected. But they live far from me. They live like four hours away, nine hours away, uh, 10 hours away. So trying to find local friends in my area, it's, it's challenging. It really is because I'm not going to settle for less. I'm not going to settle. I refuse. I want someone who's my equal. And for 2022, I am looking for females who are strong, smart, independent, and who are confident. I don't want no more females in my life who feel that a man is the be all. If I don't have a man, I can't be happy. If I don't have a man, I can't be fulfilled. That's not an independent woman. And that is not a confident woman. A man is not the be all to end all. And he's not a God. So for 20, I already have my three girlfriends who I've had, like I said, since we was in high school, junior high school. You know what I'm saying? And, and those are the ones that I'll keep who, who, who are the way they are. But going forward, I am not dealing with no more weak women. I can't do it. You either going to have 
uh, 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 enough self-esteem and enough confidence to know that you don't need no man to validate you or to make you feel like you're worth something. That's ridiculous to me. And going forward, I don't want those type of females in my in my life. I don't. Because to me, they're toxic. They're weak. They're the reason why we don't have any good men because they put up with so much abuse. And I can't be bothered. Those type of women this day and age right now, where I'm at, the chapter and the season that I'm at in in my life right now, those type of women, they make me want to throw up. I, I, I want to hurl. Everything is about a man. Every goddamn thing. And it's ridiculous. Now, like I said, I do my share of dating for some clowns that sh pop up in my DMs on Facebook. Or it's, there's not a month that goes by that some dude is not trying to pick me up whether I'm at the bus stop or whether I'm walking or doing certain things because I stay focused on what I'm interested in. And in the process, you meet different people. Some of the clowns I will definitely go out with. Most of them, I put them in my toy box. They're not keepers. They're just something to do when I get bored. And that's it. But my main focus, I focus, I have so much to do. I have projects that I'm working on. I have my Christian meetings. I have my work, my full-time job. I have my two channels. One is a ministry channel. This channel is my current events. It shows you how people are feeling currently and what people are thinking about currently. This is my information channel. And then I have my, like I said, my ministry channel, True Love Ministries. I have uh, 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 my book, my second book that I'm still working on. It's been forever, but I'm still making additions on that. I finally finished writing it and now I'm, I'm editing it. You know, I have projects. I have a lot of things that I enjoy doing when I'm alone, when I'm just here with Sheila, when I'm here with me, myself and I and Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, I'm good. And when it comes to men, the only two men's validation that I need is Jehovah, Yahweh, and Jesus Christ. That's it. Once they tell me that, Sheila, you are a beautiful person, you have a great heart, you are amazing, girl, I'm good. That's all the validation I need. And I'm looking for other women who recognize that, too. All of this needing people to tell you that you're you're beautiful, that you're good enough, that you're work. I don't need nobody else to tell me that, especially these imperfect people. I don't care. I care about keeping God and Christ's approval. I really mean that with with, with everything that I am. That's what I mainly care about. And I'm looking for women who are no longer sleepwalking. I need women who are woke. If you're not woke and you're still sleepwalking, honey, you, me, we're never going to get along, ever. Anyway, oh God, I feel so good after having uh, relieved that. You know, let that out. Let it out. Let it out. But anyway, so you got to uh, hear my uh, son, which he seems to, it, I know he's well adjusted. And I love the fact that he don't have no problem cutting people off. He don't have no problem walking away. The only one he's kind of connected to is his sister. And she treats him so badly. Just, you know, she's a Jehovah Witness. And she treats him so badly. And, and, and she's, we don't even recognize her anymore. Um, but that's the only one that he still tries to stay say you know connected to because he he can't believe that she could be so i don't know but uh, you know everybody has their journey to go through and whatever me i don't i don't bother calling the girl i don't call her i don't do none of that because i'm not gonna have no child of mine disrespecting me if you can't treat me the way Jehovah said you're supposed to treat your parents with honor and respect, you will not be around me. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I will dead you. That's right. Got parents out here, single parents, busting their behind for their kids. And when they grow up, they treat you like you're crap. I'm just so grateful to Jehovah God that he blessed me with an amazing son who loves my company. That's my love language, quality time spent with me when it comes to my children. 
and he treats me with the highest of honor and respect. He always makes me feel valued and loved. And I pray that Jehovah reward him for that. I really do. Anyway, this is Sheila True Love, truly loving you. Until next time, bye for now.